Aravat, the Elephant Chenju was a farmer who lived with his family in the village of Bihar. He had a small field where he grew squash and cauliflower to sell at the market. He was proud of his cauliflower patch. They were the best in town, and this year had grown as they had never before. People that passed by were in awe of the abundant and large crops. His wife suggested that he guard watch over the field at night, so nobody would steal his crops. Chenju thought that this was a very good idea indeed, and built a bamboo shack in the middle of his cauliflower patch. After dinner, he said goodnight to his wife and children, and took a blanket outside to the shack, and fell asleep until the next day. The following night, he did the same thing. But the third night, something woke him up. There was a dead silence. Not even dogs were barking. He looked around and was suddenly dumbfounded. A white cloud was descending from the night sky, right on top of his crops. From the cloud, a small elephant emerged that shined in the moonlight. The elephant stretched out its trunk and began to eat his cauliflowers, one by one. After eating a dozen of them without stopping, it seemed full and hopped back onto the cloud which ascended back into the sky. Chenju was dazed. He ran home and woke up his wife, who was sleeping deeply. She didn't believe him and suggested that he had been having a nightmare. The following night, Chenju went to the shack in his patch and stayed awake until the cloud arrived, carrying the elephant. The animal feasted upon his crops and then took off on the cloud once again. Chenju ran back home to tell his wife. This time she paid attention and told him that the elephant was Aravat. Aravat came from the heavens and belonged to the Lord Indira, God of Gods. Chenju listened, perplexed. His wife was the daughter of a wise master and knew a lot about these things. She held his arm firmly and told him to grab onto the elephant's tail next time it came so he could travel the heavens. And so Chenju did so, and grabbing onto the elephant's tail, he entered the cloud on his way to the heavens. He stayed there for a whole day and was amazed by the streets, the palaces, the cisterns full of crystalline water, and the singing of birds. But who liked the most were the pastries in the kitchens. They were simply delicious, and he could think of nothing else. When he came home that night, he couldn't stop thinking about those pastries. His wife warned him to never tell anybody about his adventure, ever. The next day he sat in his garden in front of his house and did not go to work. Other farmers passed by and asked him what the matter was. Chenju told them that he had eaten too many pastries and needed to rest. The men were perplexed, but Chenju disobeyed his wife and explained that he had eaten them in the heavens. At first they thought that he had gone mad but slowly they realized that he was telling the truth. Slowly, more and more people came to sit by him, and Chenju felt like an important person for the first time in his life. He invited them to all go and visit the heavens with him in the night. He told them the whole tale and proposed the following idea. He would grab onto the elephant's tail, and behind him, they would all grab onto each other's shirts in a line. This way, they could all ascend to the cloud and visit the heavens. The whole town rang with the news. Only men could go on this journey. The women made large bags for them to bring home pastries. After a lot of fussing and the chaos, the men were finally assembled into a line to await the elephant. At the back of the line was a fat, whiny man. That night, the white cloud descended into the cauliflower field, shining as bright as ever. Aravat, the elephant, majestically climbed down into Chanju's crops and devoured several dozens of his best cauliflowers while the men patiently waited for him to finish the feast. Finally, he climbed back into the cloud with a trail of men clinging behind. During the journey, many men began to grow impatient. The fat man at the end of the line started to ask how much longer the journey would take. His obnoxious cries became louder and finally reached Chanju, who replied impatiently, a lot. The fat man kept making a fuss and started asking how many pastries one could eat in the heavens, tugging on the man in front of him. The message finally reached Chenju, who lost his patience, and replied, As many as you wish, spreading his arms wide open. With this movement, he let go of the elephant's tail, and everyone fell onto the ground in a twisted mound of arms and legs. They untangled themselves, brushed off the dirt from the ground, and each man went home, mumbling about the fat man at the end of the line. This was the end of the dream of eating pastries in the heavens. The elephant never came back to Chenju's garden.